This is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at a map called Mount Koot Tha. What a strange name, but it's based on the real life location's name, so I really can't say anything about that. It is a place in Brisbane, Australia, and we have six different choices as to where to start, and for once, I'm not going to start the default location. No, we're going to start at the roundabout because it's the first one listed. And right off the bat, you can see this is a pretty nice looking map and it doesn't just look like an extension of East Coast USA like some maps. It actually has its own look to it that makes it feel like it's actually in Australia. Now, before I do any driving, I should also mention there is a rain version of the map that we'll be taking a look at later on. So let's decide on a car. How about an ETKI series? And we're going to get the TT Sport Evolution because we got to have the fast version. And the sign right there says keep left, but I don't trust that sign. I just don't trust it. We're going to go to the right instead. And the thing about roundabouts is they are always so long and they take forever. You just got to keep going round and round and round. I wonder if actually if I could slide it around. That'd be fun, right? Let's see. Oh, the automatic transmission doesn't want to slide. Hold on. Manual mode. And here we go. Yes, we can slide around the roundabout. No problem. Excellent. Okay, let's uh, actually go this way, though. We'll put it back to automatic mode. It's just right there. It wanted to upshift every time the car wanted to slide. So around this place, there are a lot of like little outcroppings like this that you can drive into. And I'll be doing that every now and then, but there's so many of them, it would take forever if we go to all of them. And one thing that does is it makes the map feel a lot more open than it is, because in reality, this map is pretty much just one single road with really no other alternative roads. But there are little outcroppings like that that make it feel a lot bigger and like there's a lot more to it than there actually is, which is really nice. Like over there, we got that dirt there on the right side well we did now it's gone by the time i said right side instead of just saying over there and pointing with my camera a little bit while i was trying to drive it's a lot to do at once how about instead of talking about that we crash the car though just real quickly just into the trees and you see right there that's one thing map does a really good job of making everything look great until you do something like this and at that point you're like wait a minute i've been bamboozled so let's bring this thing back up onto the road well actually before we do that can we see the city from here i think i might have saw it yeah so that's actually kind of neat. You can actually see the city out in the distance, which is something that you can really do in the real life location. So I thought that was pretty cool that you could see it from here. Anyways, as I was saying, let's go ahead and bring this car back up to the road. And we'll keep driving this car for a bit more. But before we do that, the license plate. It says Queensland Sunshine State. So I have to assume that's what the license plates actually look like in Queensland, Australia, or they're just bamboozling me again. You also might have noticed when we flew off of the road, there was like this little dirt path that we flew over. And yes, we could drive on that. It doesn't go anywhere. It just runs along parallel to the road, basically. But it's there and it is drivable, although not the safest road to drive on. It's very easy for your car to kind of slide off of that because it's thin and it's slanted. So you got to be careful. Thankfully, I have all wheel drive with all wheel drive. It makes things like that a lot easier. That's why I chose the all wheel drive version, because I know I would be going in the dirt a lot. You also notice I just went right to that barrier. All those little white ones. As far as I've seen, none of them will actually stop your car. They just go right through your car. But every other barrier on the map that I've crashed into, it actually does crash your car. So anyways, back under the dirt and then back off of the dirt and onto the road. And the road I should mention is very accurate to the real life roads from what I've seen. I looked up pictures and stuff and yeah, it looks just like it. The trees and stuff, they're similar but different, but the road itself, it is super, super accurate looking. And then another little outcrop right here. Drive around, look, there's a fallen tree and whoa. I did not expect that. There was just a little branch from the fallen tree right there. That branch was able to do some serious damage to my car. It looked like it messed up the suspension and even damaged the vehicle itself because both of the doors are stuck open. It's just this little idiot branch. Ah, it was not what I expected to happen. And now the car is even pulling to the right. That is not good. Thankfully, it looks like the corners coming up are all to the right. So we'll be okay through there. But the second we have a corner going to the left, I'm going to wreck this thing. And we can only turn to the right for so long. This ain't no oval. So here's the corner to the left. Time to wreck it. Just right into that. And ooh, that was an interesting crash. That was not what I expected to happen. We're actually completely stuck. I'm trying to back up here and it's not moving, but I think the car would still be drivable if it wasn't stuck. Anyways, we'll pull it back a bit and let's try out a car that's even faster than this one. So how about an Ibishu Pessima? And we'll go with the track edition. And what's the first thing you do when you get a brand new car? Some of you guys are going to say wreck it, right? Well, you're just wrong. The answer is we're going to park it. And this is actually kind of interesting. We're in a handicap spot. And in the US, handicap spots always have some extra room to the side in case you need to like pull a wheelchair out of the vehicle. You need to open the door all the way up. Here, though, it just looks like a regular spot that I guess is closest to the destination. 
I don't know if that's a, an Australia thing or a map thing or what. I would have to look it up to know for certain, but I'm not gonna worry about that. Instead, I'm gonna worry about my car, which I'm pretty sure is faster than the ETK I see as I was driving before, but I'm not certain yet. Gotta do some driving, figure it out. But we can't drive too fast because I gotta look over here. So there is a Channel 9 news station building over here. And later on, we'll also see the Channel 7 news station building, which to me looks a lot cooler than the one Channel 9 has. Now, as far as I can tell, there is no way into there. You can only look at it from the outside. Again, it's one of those things that makes the map feel so much more lively. Even though we're only driving on one road, there is so much to look at. Like over here, look, there's a trash can and a picnic bench and maybe a barbecue of sorts. There's basically a picnic area over here. And I bet if we look around, there's all kinds of stuff, right? Like over here, all right. There's another trash can there. And what does that sign over there say? I bet it says like picnic area, right? Let's see, it says picnic area in Brisbane City Council. And look at the design of the sign. It's a nice little design. It's all wavy and stuff. It looks cool. Just so much neat stuff to look at. You can even see the building from over here. You can actually still see the number nine on it from way over here. You know what that building is no matter where you are. There's a couple more barbecues and benches and stuff all around this place. There's a sign right there. What does this sign say? It says gray gum picnic area 100 meters on the right. So I bet there's going to be some more picnic stuff over here. Oh, but there's another sign actually. What is the other sign saying? Let me park this car real quickly. And that sign does have some text on it. So over here, it says range view picnic area 100 meters on the left. So yeah, there are just picnic areas all over the place. I actually saw the other one. We'll go ahead and drive to it. It was only 100 meters away. I could have just drove to it and then went to the sign. But there it is. And just like all the other things, you can't actually drive to it. That is a real thing that'll stop you. See, the car just bounced off of it. But it looks like, you know, there is a parking area over there. So you can park the car and then take your picnic out and go picnic with the family and have all kinds of good, wholesome family fun. And there's another building coming up. That was the Channel 7 news building. Once again, no real way into the building, but we can get closer than the last one. We can go over here, which goes to the Channel 7 parking area, I guess. And that's as close as you can get to the building. And it's a cool building design. It's not a building I've seen before. So I have to assume that building was custom made for this map. And it's actually what the building looks like in real life. And it's kind of funny to me that both of them just have buildings right next to each other like that, basically. And the best part is there are even more new stations around this area. Real quickly though, we've been driving so slow, I wanna get this thing over 100 miles per hour, and there we go, we are over 100 miles per hour, and that's way too fast because we're gonna miss one of the news stations. We actually just completely overshot it. But this one is Channel 2. So again, just more and more, although Channel 2 looks kinda depressing, doesn't it? Like, especially over here, look at Channel 10. It's just, they look so much fancier. Poor Channel 2. Up, oh, hit the tree a little bit. I thought I'd be able to clear it. I was not able to clear it. Anyways, you can kinda drive up this one a bit, again though, this is about as close as you can get. There's also this billboard over here, which I guess is the real news person. I don't know. It could just be stock footage, but it does look like somebody who could be a news person. So you drive up to here. They're like, hey, you can't go in here. You don't actually work here. And you're like, oh, yeah, you're right. So I got to back out of here and go back to the road. Now, one thing I should mention, though, is I say you can't get to the buildings and stuff. Yeah, you could just move the camera and teleport the vehicle. The problem is, is the map is not designed for that. You see, when you go to the back of the building, it doesn't look right. When you're at the front, it looks great. Then you go to the back and you realize, wait a minute, the building's just floating there. So this is really the kind of map that works best when you actually follow the rules. If you start breaking the rules and teleporting all over the place, it kind of breaks the immersion of the map. And that's how modern video games are made. They are all made with the assumption that you're not going to be able to break out of areas. It's not like it's some knock against the map. It's just the way it's designed. It's a more modern design, actually, than most of the maps in BeamNG Drive. So let's go ahead and go around this corner, which is always when I crash on. That one corner, it always gets me, and I know because I recognize that barrier. And oops, there's a rock right there. Oh no, I've ruined everything. We need a new car, don't we? Let's see, yeah, it drives fine. We don't need a new car, but it would be nice. So let's abandon this one into the dirt and get a new one. How about we go with a Legrone? And when you get the Legrone, you gotta get the custom version because the custom version, that's the fun version. The other ones, they're so slow, they don't have enough power to be fun. This one has just enough to have some fun with it. Like you could easily slide this thing around corners and all kinds of nonsense like that, no problem. As you will now see me demonstrate as my Legrand actually slid through the corner without crashing spectacularly. That is great, let's do it again. The funny thing is though, is when we slide around corners with this thing, it slows down quite a bit. A normal all wheel drive or real wheel drive car, they don't slow down as much as a front wheel drive when you're sliding around the corners like this. It's definitely not the fastest way around the corners, but for this car, it is the most fun way. 
All right, let's go all out on the slide on this next corner. I want to slide this thing as much as I possibly can, and we're going pretty good. The only problem is it's hard to hold a slide because you slow down so much. So that was pretty good. Now let's wreck this thing up. Little tap on the rear, and the bumper is still attached. I thought it was going to fly off. All right, let's try to remove this bumper violently. That removed the wheel as well, and it flipped the vehicle over, and the bumper's coming back. Well, that vehicle is ruined, so I guess we go ahead and reset it, and the wheel was coming in a frame right as I reset it. I wish I would have saw it rolling. Uh, either way, though, we can continue driving along, and we would have another picnic area over to the left if it wasn't blocked off like all the other picnic areas. Imagine, though, you go all the way here to have a lovely picnic with your family, and every picnic area you can't actually go into because they're all blocked off. I would drive a man crazy, wouldn't it? Eventually just say, we're eating in the car. Oh, we got an interesting sign over here. Apparently, this is where kangaroos would cross the road. Is that a kangaroo farm over the left and they always hop the fence? Is that what that is? I don't know. I kind of got distracted. I saw another road I wanted to drive on and it doesn't actually go anywhere, just like all the other roads. See, there is possibly a kangaroo farm. I, I mean, there's no reason it couldn't be, right? They have kangaroo farms? Maybe. I was hoping that sign would say, but it just says picnic area like all the other ones. Do you have any signage on you? No, there's nothing there either. Who knows what it could be? It's just this nice, big, open, grassy area, though. They could have just about anything, basically. Maybe it's an emu farm. The only thing is, is if an emu farm, you're going to have some problems. Because if you get into a war with those things, you can't win. Emus are like 100% victory rate in war. That's crazy. They are that good and strong in war. Oh, this is a neat little dirt road. It doesn't go anywhere, just like all the other ones. But it goes for a little bit. It just kind of goes up into the forest and then ends in the trees, just like that. We could keep driving through the trees a little bit, but eventually I'm sure we'll crash and there's a wall there, so you can't really go too far in that direction. So let's just try to get ourselves back to the dirt and then back to the main road. And we're gonna actually be going pretty fast. That has a nice slope to it, up to 60 miles per hour as we enter the road. That's not bad at all. And now let's get rid of this car right into this wall over here, boom. I, don't, I guess that wasn't a wall, but whatever. I crashed into it. Car actually still puts down power a little bit. Not enough to really be worth driving, but it can struggle its way along this road if you really wanted to. I'm not gonna. I wanna replace it with the, uh, ooh. Let's go with the base version of the Bolide. That's one of those cars I don't really drive that often. I drive the Bolide a lot, but usually I'm going with the faster version because what's the point of a car that looks fast that isn't actually fast? And it's not like it's gonna be more reliable. It's still gonna be like all the same finicky Italian parts stuff so you might as well get the better engine right you know it makes me wonder in a car like this what is the price difference when you're really just changing the engine mostly you know that might be small suspension tweaks but it's the same vehicle at its heart it's just an upgraded version basically and right there is a sign that says welcome to a nogder creek thank you that's where i am now all right what's over here to the left got a little outcropping and it goes to a dead end how about over here it goes just right back to the road Oh, there is a nice house over here, though. You can, like, park in a uh, garage. Let's see. Back it in because I overshot it just a little bit. And then into my fancy little garage. It doesn't actually have a door. It's more of just an awning covering, I guess. And there we go. And then you leave your house through the dirt and then onto the road. That's one thing. I never take my real car on dirt. Only paved roads. Okay, this is, this is the one spot in the map where the road actually splits for a significant amount. And of course, me being me, I chose to go on the right side, which means we're going the wrong direction on the road because that's the way YBR does it. And I actually feel like I wish I had a little bit more power going through because it's uphill. Even though I got a car that looks so fast, I feel like I need more power. I mean, we are going up to 70 miles per hour eventually, but it took some time. The steepness just slowed it down. Should do better on the downhill though, right? Let's find out. Just make a little loop right here. And for some reason, there's actually three roads. I'm not exactly sure why, but there's three roads here. You know, I figure, okay, maybe you have two. One for going up the mountain, one for going down the mountain. But why is there a third? That I'm really not sure. Again, one of those things I probably should have done some research on, but I didn't think about it until right now. And I'm just looking at it, I'm like, huh, interesting. But we can't be thinking too much. Instead, let's just crash. Crashing's easy. You just slide the car a little bit. Do some spinning, and you got a ruined car. Can it drive at all? Let's find out. Oh yeah, it's actually, it looks like it could still be pretty drivable. How is it for accelerating? Oh man, this thing really, really wants to drive sideways on you. Just trying to keep it straight is a very difficult, and the faster you go, the harder it becomes. That thing is not gonna go very well through there, so 
let's get something different. How about, let's say the Americans are invading. We could get the sheriff version of the roamer and then we can just roam about. We got the sheriff lights on too. So everybody knows American coming through, disrespecting Australia and all that stuff because that's basically what I've been doing in this video, disrespecting Australia, right? You know, saying, do they have kangaroo farms? I don't know. Do they eat kangaroos? I don't know. Do they eat kangaroos? <laughs> they don't, right? On the other hand, why not? Unless it tastes bad, why not eat the kangaroos? I don't know. Maybe it's like a taboo to eat kangaroo because I never hear about people eating kangaroo. Then again, I don't look up Australian diets that much. Who knows? There's a parking lot over there. That I can tell you is a fact. I like facts because facts are fact. There's no arguing about it. When I say it, I know it's true. I know that's a parking lot. I know that's a tree. I know that's a roamer. I know that's a, I don't know, more trees. There's not really much else to look at. There's the barrier. There's lots of trees, but the trees look good. The road looks good with the trees. It's like, it's a nice place to drive, like I said. So let's wreck this roamer. Just tap it into the wall and we're still good to go. Tap it into this wall and there goes the rear bumper, but we're still good to go. How about a big crash? I just want to see a target. How about that big sign? Kaboom into the big sign because I was trying to read it. You know, Americans, we see something, we try to read it. And they just drive towards it without thinking, then we smash into it. So the sign says, Sir Samuel Griffith Drive, Mount Cool, the Lookout and Summit Restaurant. We got to refresh this thing because it is damaged up. And that's why I got an off-road vehicle. You see how easy it pulled out of that position? That's why we do it. And for once, you know what? I'm going to follow the flow of traffic. It's telling me, don't drive in this direction. That's the wrong direction. Don't be an idiot. And I'm like, okay, you know what? Just this once, I will not be an idiot. I will drive the correct direction. Even though this whole time on the map, I've been driving on the right side of the road. But you might recognize this spot. This is where we started. So we made a loop of the place, basically. Although we do want to check out this area because this is kind of like the top of the mountain viewing area. So you got a nice view up here. So you could go up, park your car American style. It means just kind of slide it in. It's like, yep, we're parked. You get out of the thing and you walk up and I don't know how you get up here, but let's say you find your way up here and you're like, wow, look at the view. You can see all of Australia from here. But there's a curved earth, so you can't. Just kidding. The earth is flat. So if you're up this high, you can easily see the whole planet. What if we put the car on the roof? Yep, that works. Why'd I do it? Don't know, but I did. So that's good to see that it at least has the ability to do that. We can also teleport it up here and that works fine as well. Can we drive it out of here. Is there a way out? Uh, Yes, there is. Not the prettiest way of getting out of there, but there is a way out. How about uh, we check out the rainy version of the map though? I'm not gonna do too much driving there because I mostly wanted to look at the dry version, but the rain version's here. So let's load it up at the summit. And here's what the map looks like when it's raining. So that's gonna do it for this video. Nah, we'll drive around a little bit. Just give you a quick pan though. And then let's decide on a car. How about we use the Autobello Piccolina? We're gonna get the 150 Corsa, which probably not the greatest vehicle for this because in the rain, yeah, this thing, it's going to slide all over the place. You're trying to drive in a straight line. It's not going to be easy. On the other hand, if you want to drive where you drive like kind of like this, where you're basically driving sideways at all times, you could definitely do that. No problem. I wonder about the, the dirt. Does it feel any different? Uh, the dirt feels about the same. It doesn't feel like it's any more muddy than normal. Mostly the change is going to be on the pavement, it seems like. So let's be very careful as we drive this thing and make sure we don't accidentally spin out because I can accidentally spin this thing out on the dry roads. Wet roads, it'll definitely spin out. Let's see, if I slam my brakes at like 60 miles per hour, will that make the back end kick out? Let's see. Actually, we can go a little bit faster than 60 because we got a nice straightaway here. So up to 80 miles per hour and then slam on the brakes. Oh, it actually stays pretty straight. No, it doesn't. <laughs> That's funny. The second I let off of the brakes, it just spun. I thought for sure that if it was going to spin, it would have spun by then. So I let off the brakes and then boom, it was gone. That is funny. Let's do that again on purpose this time, though. So we're braking, steering left. It does nothing. I'm hitting go left, and it's doing absolutely nothing. That's how little traction we actually have in the rain with this thing. You can brake hard and then try to steer, and it does nothing. All right, now we're going to spin it out, though. So, whoa, 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 whoa. No, not yet. Not yet. I haven't even got the speed, you crazy car. Calm down. All right, so slam on the brakes, go full right, and then it'll spin out. Yep, yep, it spun out. I even tried to save it a little bit, but that thing is just gone if you do that. There is no way to save it. The good news is this thing is small and really easy to save when you get in that kind of situation. Like you can spin it and then just carefully maneuver it to get it back going in a straight line without damaging it. It's very, very easy to do that. 
is definitely not something you want to have happen to you accidentally. But once you know it's gonna happen, it's a lot of fun. But if you're just driving along and then all of a sudden your car spins out like this, you're gonna have a heart attack. Although that one, I kind of messed it up. I didn't have enough speed or a good angle really to do a 360. I had to do like a little 180 and then give up halfway through it kind of nonsense. That was ugly. That was real ugly. You know, I should probably stop doing this. Yeah, it's fun spinning all over the place, but it's probably more boring for you guys to watch me just spinning versus actually driving good. So let's drive good for a little bit because you can drive good in the rain. You just have to try harder. It's not like normal driving where you could easily just compensate mid corner. You got to expect what the corner is going to be and then drive accordingly. Like right here, you see nice and smooth. That allows you to actually remain in control, no problem, at even higher speeds. But that also kind of is boring, isn't it? You know what's fun? I know you guys like this at least, crashing. So slide this thing into the trees. And the axle is broken in the rear and we got no acceleration here. It's, it's gone. Well, maybe a little acceleration, but not enough to really do anything. So we'll just bring it back on up to the road and let's try a different vehicle. How about we do a H series Vandal. That should be pretty good for the rain. I'm thinking I won't have many problems driving this thing because yes, the road is more slick than a normal road, but I have all wheel drive, which helps compensate. And then also this thing's not gonna go that fast anyways. It's a big, heavy van that's gonna be going slow enough where I probably won't run into issues unless I drive really, really recklessly. And ooh, that's kind of interesting right there. It almost feels like I have more traction in the dirt than the rain. That's really weird. It must be a combination of the tires I have on this thing and just how slick the road actually is. It's slicker than I was giving it credit for, that's for sure. It does take some extra driving to go through these corners. Like you have to swing the vehicle around to really get it to corner in as tight as I would want it to. Let's go up the top of the hill though and get a view of the place while it's raining. Actually, you know what? You might not be able to see the city when it's raining because it does look like it's foggy up here, right? Yeah, you can't. You'd be able to see the city from here. I don't see nothing. That's pretty cool. Although it'd be really sad in real life if you want to go see the great views and then it's raining. Although you would kind of know that it's going to be raining in advance a little bit, I would think. Ooh, that was sketchy. I thought I might flip over for a second. Uh, so we got a downhill in the rain using a car. There is a big heavy van. How fast can we go and how close can we get to the barriers? The answer is surprisingly close without crashing. Uh, this corner, I don't know if it's going to do it. Let's find out. No, it's not happening. Let's go up that dirt instead. And that will ruin the vehicle and do it for this video. So until next time, this has been YBR. And remember, if you like or dislike this video, I will know. I can tell by the raindrops. The pattern tells me what you're doing. So do the right thing and I'll see you next time.